Hey everyone, welcome to The Path of Me. I'm your host, Wendy Hutchinson, and I have a lovely guest today. His name is Steve Barrett. He's a personal friend of mine and has been walking his um, soul path for a while. And I wanted to invite him on just to share his wisdom, his story. And I know you guys, if you just sit back and relax, are going to really enjoy this conversation. So welcome, Steve. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Wendy. It's a pleasure. Steve, I'm really glad you invited me on this. Of course. Your show. Uh, it's awesome. Steve is a nurse and works with hospice patients. And I know you've been walking this path for a long time, Steve. I was wondering if you could give us a little context of your journey, you know, who you were before you started this very conscious um, journey forward in your life. Yeah. So that could take a, t a little, a little time. <laughs> I'll do, <laughs> I'll do sort of the mid, mid condensed version. Okay. Um, really, uh, I, because actually I, uh, I was talking about this recently and I realized that even as a, a child, I was searching and seeking in some ways. I was brought up Catholic, but not strict, mm -hmm. like some strict, strict Catholic right. Catholicism. But I did go to Sunday school, those type of things. Right. And I remember myself, you know, as a little kid, thinking and contemplating what this is, what God is, you know, would I disappoint God? Mm -hmm. And uh, subsequently, you know, through sessions I've had, uh, healing sessions, found out even more, like as a, as a four-year-old searching like where, what happened to god i actually remember that happening uh and me being a four-year-old looking up through the out of the kitchen table and saying where did god go yeah. where's god so that of course th this memory came back much later recently so uh but at 13 i just i i was still in the catholic church my mo mother and father wanted me to be uh, confirmed and at that point i already knew i didn't believe what they were teaching mm -hmm. uh, but surprisingly i was like as a 13 14 year old I was like i'm I'm okay with getting uh confirmed it doesn't really mean anything to me but it means something to them so i can go forward with this and um as you know the years went on i dealt with a lot of you know depression and anxiety so that like many people the suffering <laughs> kind yeah. of pushed me towards searching yeah. And uh, around 25, I had quite a shift. Before that, I didn't know what I was. I was an agnostic. I was, an, uh, you know, eighth, I believe more, I was more uh, an atheist <laughs> at one point. So just bouncing around, just searching, you know, soul searching. That's, we're yeah. all doing that, right? We're yeah. searching back to our source. At 25, 26, I really had quite a shift. Started um, a lot of, I guess what you call new age thinking, new age activities was introduced actually through my mother. Um, I had come home to visit because I was living overseas um, and, and I was struggling. I had just been newly divorced and uh, she introduced me to, re you know, channelers, readers, uh, had energy work done, all kinds Your of things done. Your mom was open then. She was open, yeah. Oh. She, she definitely was. And she was uh, quite the catalyst for me. Her, actually, my sister also. They were both very much on the uh, on the path of spiritual, trying to live a spiritual life and discover what that means right. for them. Right. And, um, so really from that point on, I've been, that has been my goal really. How can I connect back to my heart? How can I connect back to God? And I'll tell you, it's been a, it's a bit of a, a rocky road. It's been a <laughs> tough journey. Yeah. It's been slow and seemingly endless but now as as i look back i can see how the progression was always there even though to me at the time back years back or even even four or five years ago even two years ago i'm being like well, when when are things going to shift what's going on here mm -hmm. you know i would be complaining to god <laughs> why isn't it happening faster you should be on my time schedule, not yours. <laughs> that and, uh, ego is really strong, isn't it? It's got its own agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But um, 
always I, I somebody has come into my life, some book, some teaching, even a friendship developed that has always brought me a little bit forward, little another step ahead or another step forward. And it's been quite a progression. And lately, and I think this is combined very much with what's happening on the earth. So it's never, it's never I, the individual. It's only happening to me. Oh, look, I feel clearer now. Right. I must have done it myself. It's more what's going on with the earth, the energy shift is shifts that are happening. I certainly have felt tremendous shifts over the last, I would say, four or five years, um, living more authentically connected to my heart living from a place of love wanting to give back so these things have started to shift quite dramatically over the last three four years doesn't mean i still don't get stuck <laughs> back into the cycles and even that's part of it i i've realized um so i'm shifting as well as i hope <laughs> the consciousness of the uh, world is shifting. We know that the consciousness of the planet is shifting because the frequencies on planet are going to demand that. If the frequencies yes. are rising, if the planet's ascending, then everything living on the planet needs to also rise with it, right? There has to be a yeah. resonance energetically. So I know the collective is rising and being pushed really hard right now because many have been so deeply unconscious and disconnected from themselves at source forever that, yeah. um, you know, when you live from that place, you create a lot of scenarios that just perpetuate the wounds and the um, pain within yourself. Right. So there's a lot to unpack for people and a lot to let go of as they navigate mm. forward. Right. But the beautiful thing is there's so many resources available. There's books, there's podcasts, yes. there's, yes. there's healers, there's, you know, and I really trust that everybody synchronistically finds that perfect thing, like you were saying in the perfect time to help them move on to the next stage of their evolution and journey right so it's a lot of it it's about trusting the process for me has been you know personally about really trusting the process my process and not judging myself because I was such a harsh critic of myself um, mm. prior to becoming more consciously aware of myself and the bigger picture and how everything works, you know. So I'm not yanked as much as I used to be. I used to be just triggered and like yeah. yanked in all these directions. Yeah. Um, before no. kind of traveling a more conscious path back to myself and my source of being. So um what have you noticed, Steve, coming you know, from that 25 year old kid or that kid in, in his mid twenties who had, you know, already had a lot of experience under his belt in terms of life. You'd been through a divorce, you had lived abroad, you're now kind of cracking open. Um, what have been some of the pivotal moments that have actually moved you forward here to, to bring you to this point in your, in your journey? Well, there have been, hmm, there have been definitely, there have been a few um, I'm here and then I'm there moments, but mostly it's been sort of a gradual evolution. Things have happened in my life that uh, have happened where I've made decisions and I call, I call them decisions of grace, where, for example, I was living overseas and I actually thought I was going to stay there. Yes, I had been divorced, but I had moved to a different town and developed a bit of a life there. You know, I had a girlfriend, I had friends. And I, to tell you the truth, it was easy living there. It was in Germany. I lived in a kind of a mid-city, mid-sized city. Uh, 
it was just beautiful to live there. You could get around easily with a bus, bike, go to different cities with a train. Yeah. Uh, excellent healthcare system. It was all right. great. But at one point, yeah. the thought came to me, I'm going to move back to America. And then I just knew I was. So that was just a moment where my soul said, this is where you're going, kid. <laughs> you don't have a choice, really. Yeah. But it wasn't even like I had to struggle with it. It mm -hmm. was just made. And, mm -hmm. and I absolutely understood that. I became a vegetarian like that also. At one point, I just said, oh, I'm going to be a vegetarian. Wow. And I was. You have Never a even... very clear kind of decisive knowing about some things in your life. About some things. Other things, very murky, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Where the ego is much more involved. Right. Uh, but other things, it was very clear. So kind of alluding back to what I was saying, there's always been this sort of gradual movement uh, in change in my life. Mm -hmm. People coming in, uh, giving assistance. Um, shifts in awareness. Sometimes they didn't last. Uh, so I had a couple of times where, man, just life opened up. And I just felt free where before I felt so burdened by the thoughts, the emotions, the the pain, the the self-doubts. Just, you know, it's like you're and, and I think a lot of people are like this, right? Yeah. How, how much percentage and, and there's there's gradients, there's degrees, but it's like we're carrying this pack around us, this heavy pack filled with rocks, and this is how we're going through life. And uh there's been a few times that all of a sudden that bag of rocks just fell off my shoulders wow. and i was like wow this what it this what it means this is what it means to be free right. and living spontaneous spontaneously in joy and um creativity and uh just pleasure just it feels pleasure so in good, in living and going from depression and anxiety to pleasure in living quite, quite a shift so the, often those didn't last that long. They would last months or so. I guess they were kind of little mini awakenings, mini. Um, it's almost like God said, here, let me show you something. Um, maybe we're not going to stay there, but at least you have something to see, to know that this is actually who you are. This is what it really means to live in my world. And then, you know, I don't know why we have to process so damn much in this life, <laughs> <laughs> but we, that seems to be part of it. So even though that curtain got closed again, it's giving me again, over and over the, uh, the opportunity to then go slowly back and start to release some of that stuff, you know, taking out some of those rocks from that bag. Cause I, of course I had to pick it up again, put yeah. it over my shoulders. Yeah, and walk stoop through life. It can be so That's, heavy. It can be so heavy. Yeah. I I had this meditation once, and they I was like, well, I was guided to a river in front of me in the meditation, and I heard, "These are no longer your burdens to bear." Mm. Nice. But all these logs, like I had all of these like tree logs in my arms and it was so heavy, mm -hmm. just so heavy. It's just so, I can relate to what you're speaking of, of just caring so much, you know? Mm -hmm. And and they said, the voice said, I'll take it from you. Just put it in the river. It's like kind of a fast moving river in front of me. And I just like converted oh, no. myself you know I just let it all go so that was a real eye-opening thing for me about how heavy the weight was I was carrying in my life without realizing it because it you're not consciously aware of how heavy it is because you've always carried it you know right until you put it down and you're like wow <laughs> Wow, I can stand up straight. I feel feel lighter, you know. So what was that like for you to get to a place where you could, you know, eventually 
unpack all of that? Well, I'm, I feel like I'm continuing to unpack it, mm -hmm. but I've now come to a place in this, this actually happened fairly recently where I was going through the day and again, one of these thoughts came up. And uh, so it's one of those thoughts that is like direct from your heart to yourself mm -hmm. or from God to yourself, however you want to, maybe they're one in the same, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like, I just could feel joy within myself. And the thought came, oh, that's what it means to love yourself. Wow. And I, so that reckon, it was that recognition was such a shift for me because since that time, for the most part, what I feel internally is sort of this self-sustaining joy. And it's not always like, oh, <laughs> you know, like you're running around and singing. Yeah. It's just, it can be very subtle. Right. But it's the self-sustaining joy that is independent from anything that's going on around me. Mm -hmm. um, it's self-sustaining and uh, self-creating, I guess you could say. So it's, it's very strange how it is because it's almost like I look, I can bring my awareness to it but at the same time i am the awareness that is creating you it. are it so yeah it's, i am it's it a reflection of yourself to yourself basically right but it's not so driven what, or impacted by the external right and uh certainly i felt joy before uh many times in my life a lot of happiness uh, a lot of especially in the last five six years but just that simple recognition that I need nothing else. Yes. Like this is what I've been looking for. And again, I think there's depths to it. Um, perhaps I've only sort of gotten one level down maybe, <laughs> or it will feel different at different times, um, depending what's going on. But right now, what I've noticed is when I go back to it, even if I'm feeling some trigger, some irritation, um, some sort of static energy, some reaction, I can feel that through that inner joy. And it's almost like I shine the light back onto it. And as I'm doing that, uh, for the most part, it just sort of dissolves and disappears. And uh, wow. So that's that's been really interesting. And I also noticed my ego doesn't like this new situation. <laughs> Man, the ego fights so hard to stay in control. My ego mm. fought me so hard. It took years, 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 years to yeah. tame that ego. But yeah, they don't, that aspect of you wants to hold on, right? Yeah, and it, it's that, or it's just that I've already freed up so much stuff. There's just more that's surfacing. So it's kind of just depending how you look at it. Mm -hmm. And actually, I like more that it's just, there's, I like more to look, I like to look at it more that things are just surfacing because uh, the other way is like I have to fight something. Mm -hmm. Like I have to control, I have to tame this unwieldy thing that makes me unhappy. So the other way is, um, so there's this thing that has separated me from God. And for a long time, I bought into it. And now I don't so much, but it, there's still some energy around it. And sure. uh, the more I can release that energy, actually, the more connected I'll feel back into God. So it's almost like each time is a gift. It's like, oh, here you are. This is perfect. And of course, I cannot say that I have this frame of mind every time uh, because often I do get into like, here's the resistance, you know, you're feeling, and then you're like, God damn it. Why are you here again? So you have the resistance to the resistance that you're feeling towards life. So it's like the paradox. I and, think uh, becoming more, as we go higher in our ascension and our frequency rises, we become more of an observer 
to what is presenting to yes. us we become more of an observer to the feelings an observer to our triggers an observer which removes the judgment part of it so when we're yeah. more of an observer it's an acknowledgement oh hmm, this is so interesting this is what's this about I, I always get so curious what's what is this about for me you know and I can do that with compassion and kindness and love towards myself instead of judgment, right? Or resistance, like you were saying. Um, have you found yourself becoming more an, an observer than um, participant as you've been internally unpacking and transmuting these energies coming up for you? Yeah, definitely. And it's it's become more so and so. I mean, I've been practicing presence, being present, being in the moment for so many years uh, through various teachings, but primarily when I started reading Eckhart Tolle mm -hmm. and uh, the power of now yeah. being present. So that's always, that's always like, it's, well, falling into the moment and allowing it to be as the observer mm -hmm. and what I found is that was very helpful in many things. And I and I think it did, again, shift me and help me uh, become more and more. It's almost like I, you practice presence, you become more and more present. The more you present you come, the more you actually start to feel and sense what life actually is. Because before, you're just looking through the ego, which, of course, of course unfortunately, the ego is built on discontent. <laughs> true statement and, hashtag yeah. facts for right. sure <laughs> so, yeah. so you're looking through this uh veil constantly or this filter of discontent and as that slowly goes away it's like oh i've had many times where i've been in nature and sometimes it doesn't it could be the simplest thing i'm just looking at something in the room and i'm all, almost stunned like how beautiful it is how there's so much and it's not like i'm seeing energy auras or anything right. it's very simple i'm just there in the stillness seeing this this thing it's, it could be a leaf uh, or the way the the leaves are falling on the house plant or mm -hmm. i had one experience not too long ago where i looked down and so i have like a gravel type sand, uh, dirt driveway i looked down and uh i was just astonished how all the little rocks were arranged in the sand. <laughs> like that was amazing to me. And uh, it's almost like I'm on uh, not a concert because this comes and goes this, this right. level of interest or awareness, awareness, but it's like, I'm on these little, what people would describe as drug trips really. So, but it's, it, it's just me seeing reality for the, what it is. Um, and that's the true vibration of reality. It's the, it's yeah. the beauty that we can experience, you know, viscerally, physically in our lives. But most people miss because they're so far ahead. They're not present. They're not here in yeah. the moment. And I find when we're present, time slows down. It stands still. Yeah. You almost get to savor this space or this moment. You know, I have that with my granddaughter a lot where there'll be this magical moment between us. It's just she and I and time kind of mm. stands still and I'm just like, wow, this is mm. so beautiful. Right. Just savor it and sit in it because you know, you you know, your life keeps going and you're just gonna get swept by the tide in a moment. So I just really try to be present to those moments, you know, and those gifts I feel. And the more practiced I become at it, the more I experience it in my life. And it's so beautiful. You know, you start seeing the beauty in life instead of the struggle and the pain and the, you know, you start to really understand that everything, if you can move through the emotions is a beautiful gift. Yes, it definitely is. And um, 
going back a little bit to being present or being the observer, what I've noticed. So, so many, so many years I've practiced that, but there always seemed to be sort of a coldness to it. It's like, oh, I'm the neutral observer back here. Nothing can touch me. So I could almost see that my ego was using that mm. as kind of a a shield or something or a force to almost pull, push away the reality um, that was around me. And uh, here I am back here. I'm, a, you know, nothing can touch me here. What, what I've noticed uh, that what has brought me deeper is kind of what I just talked about is noticing that inner what oh, what this is what I call it for me for myself that has been really worked is that inner smile so it's like that there's this joy inside of me that is not caused by anything it's not affected by anything and um doesn't need anything to maintain itself or to change it just is and I, I can't always feel it a hundred percent but when I bring myself back into that, then I'm all, then all of a sudden I'm watching what's around me. I am the observer, but I'm doing it now through a different lens. And that lens is just love. It's joy. Um, and when I'm connecting through that lens, it's no longer neutral, the outside. It's like, oh, that I'm connected to this. It's like an joy. immersive experience, but you're, you're right. right. I feel like your it's, soul is you're observing it from your soul self as a soul, yeah. not from the ego. So that's the ego versus soul are two different things, right? It's two different experiences. Yeah, soul and it's embodied uh, observation is your soul expression, your soul energy being present and yeah, it in and marveling at it and being immersed in it and at the same time often we don't have to engage actively but we can just be present to this beautiful yes. moment or this beautiful experience as a witness and add our love like you said how you would shine your light back sometimes when there's a reflection towards you coming or so a projection of something towards you coming, you can just shine a light back on that thought or that person or that experience yeah. because you become more aligned with yourself. You right. Know? And I notice, yeah. And I notice too, in that place, um, I not even having to intend it, I'm in a place of giving yes. rather than taking and keeping or wanting and uh, with that, I've noticed how needy, when I'm identified with whatever the ego's feeling, how much, how needy that is. And how, when I can connect to that inner smile, how giving I am. It's like I need nothing. Um, I don't need approval. I don't need anybody to do anything. All I am is this place of love for my loving myself. Yeah. Loving God, and then loving there's this light. overflow, right? It's like this yes. overflow. Yes. You're not mm. living in a space of lack or deficit or need. Um, I find that, you know, I used to give at my own expense. So the tank would yeah. you know, go down, 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 down to, to a place of resentment because yeah. you keep giving and there's nothing to give. But I've, you know, over over the years have become more connected and embodied within myself as my soul. And I, I'm so mindful of just filling my tank always. And then that there's always this overflow that I can just pour and pour and pour out. And I don't have to deplete right. myself in the process. And it brings me so much joy. There's no scorekeeping or like, Oh, I did this for you. So you owe me or mm. it's just really from my heart. Because I want right. and support others however I can, you know, whatever feels aligned also. It's never at my even, what feels aligned to do, right. you know, but I can. Yeah, and even, it. right. And then what you said too is um, before that is, you. it's not even, doesn't even have to be an activity. It's not like, oh, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to do this for you. Oh, I'm going to pick up your, you know, if you have kids, I'm going to pick up your clothes. 
<laughs> you know, it's like, it's not even doing something. It's just being in that space of presence. And I noticed I, I have actually a 14 year old uh, boy living with us. My, my, uh, my grand my uh, grandson. So that has been a great teacher. challenge. Teacher. Palace. Yes. Teacher. Um, master teacher. Yes. yes. <laughs> and has um, brought up many things, but sometimes uh, or many times um, I can hear my mind saying, oh, you should tell him to do this. You should do that. Mm -hmm. Mm, um, and I can tell it's coming from this place of irritation. Right. Um, and then with a bit of grace, I'll just take a deep breath and, and observe that and observe him and say nothing. Right. And um, all of a sudden, I end up saying something anyways, but it's coming from my heart. It's not coming it's from so different. This and place the energy of, of that is different. And it's different, received yeah. differently because there's a frequency of love in it whereas if you had initially spoken it would have been a fight or a trigger right i right. i can relate to that so much because i had a you know a child who challenged me quite a bit and oh. you know as i went further on my journey i constantly got this message that he and i agreed that he would yeah. come and oh yes serve me in this way to mm. help me with master myself. Yeah. The challenges he provided were soul contracted and he has yeah. been the biggest gift in my life because without him, I would not be here. I would not have had all of the lessons and all the triggers and all the heartbreak and all of it that allowed me to do what you do, which is pay attention and just open my heart and stop trying to control outcomes and stop trying to intervene because the control really was about me not being able to have the stress tolerance to hold the discomfort of what I was observing. Yeah. So I want to control it. You know, I just didn't have the stress tolerance, but now as I've gone further, I can just hold the space and then, and, and I find I am very silent. I don't need to say as much anymore. I'm like, oh, yeah. that might hurt, mm. but okay, we'll just see how this unfolds. You know, I'm not going to say anything. I've become so quiet, a silent observer of what's happening, you know. And yep. it's a beautiful thing. It's hard to go through because these people who trigger us so much. It, it's so personal it feels so personal you know but I really found that you know it was all it was all on a soul level yeah a gift a gift to me for yeah. my soul growth you know and I think it helps it still can be a struggle and it still can hurt and you you're feeling all these negative emotions that you don't want to feel but at least knowing that, yes, yeah. this is a this was agreed to. Yeah. This is why why he's here. And then even in the moment, um, even if you feel triggered, uh, giving thanks for that. So it's a shift of uh, perspective, for and sure. that can be very, be very helpful. And that's really that the art of surrendering to life, and maybe agreeing or coming to the realization, perhaps that life is giving you everything you need right now at this time to, to find your way into more love. A hundred percent. And it's really, it comes disguised yes. as pain <laughs> and suffering right. sometimes. It's, <laughs> that like, it's almost like it comes in and it's wearing this horrible Halloween mask. Yes. And you're like, oh, get get away. I don't want this. Yeah. But underneath that mask is just another version of love waiting to meet you. Yes. And we have to also, as we go further on the journey, is meet ourselves, right? As as the more we can meet ourselves with love, yeah. the more we can hold the space in our heart and open to hold that for others. And you become more adept, I think, as you master yourself at reading the energy 
And yeah. so instead of taking everything personally and being reactive, you can have more compassion and you can see and understand when you read the energy, you can see and understand the wound that is driving the behavior towards you. It's so clear. And it has allowed me to have more compassion for others, not to the point where I would sacrifice myself and tolerate something that's not aligned for me. I will stand up for myself if something is, um, if I'm being disrespected or something, right? But I can just respond with more grace or I can remove myself because I know this isn't going to end well if I say something. So, But I can see the inner child in that person and how it's showing up in the exchange, you know? And it, it allows me to be a little more compassionate in my response you know or like I said or walk away <laughs> and just yeah not engage in it and be, choose not to engage in it and I think that's totally appropriate sometimes too yeah and that's really the freedom that you're gaining uh when you come to live more and more in the heart in from that from that place of the inner smile because you say before two scenarios uh somebody insults you what your ego reacts because it's being it's really the your idea of yourself is being attacked yeah so you think you need to defend the idea of yourself mm -hmm. against this other person right. and it's uh come it comes from a place of fear ultimately mm -hmm. and a misunderstanding the misunderstanding that you're not wholly and whole as you are so you've forgotten that and you're attached to the ego belief that it's this limited thing that exists in a small space of time and you better damn well protect yourself because you're completely separate from all that other shit out there right. so it's quite quite the uh it's quite a dance scenario. it's quite right. a dance right and, and, but what and i found just shift... for... no go ahead steve yeah um shifting into that place of love and also maybe love for the reaction um you gain such freedom because just like you said you can see the pain in the disconnect that yeah. that other person is feeling as well as you're feeling perhaps you're feeling it but you're not completely identified with it anymore and of course that gives such compassion and such empathy and such love and sometimes like you said it doesn't mean mean that you have to intervene and do something but sometimes you do say hey that's not okay but you're doing it out of place of clarity and love if you're doing it from the ego of course it's the need it's like oh i need to correct this person otherwise i'm gonna lose that identity the energy of is so different the energy is so different yeah but i think all of it stems from how deeply we love ourselves Yes. You know, and this journey, you know, people have all this spiritual jargon to talk about this journey. I don't even like to use the term spirituality. It's not spirituality. Mm -hmm. It's really our desire to remember who we are mm -hmm. and reconnect to our source self, to our souls, to our truth, to our love for ourselves, which has been over lifetimes destroyed through manipulation and control um, of, of us in human form in different lifetimes, persecution, you know, not feeling safe speaking your truth because maybe you were burned at the stake for, for speaking your truth in a prior life. Maybe you were, you know, tortured or had a had a difficult past and so you've never felt emotionally safe speaking your truth it, it, there's so much we carry throughout our soul history and past lives into this life and are not always consciously aware of it and it's difficult because these patterns are so deeply rooted in our dna in our programming, you know, and we, we come here to heal these things. 
but it's very difficult when we're blind to it, the history of it, and understand, oh, this isn't, a lot of the things we believe about ourselves that are negative, just, they really aren't true. They're just yeah. stories we've told ourselves. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's a huge revelation mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Yes. When they get to the point of healing, and they're like, oh my gosh, it wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. There's not there. I'm not flawed as a person. Mm -hmm. um, I was just made to believe that by my circumstances in this lifetime and also past lifetimes. And I think coming to that realization allows so much relief and compassion towards the self that it kind of cracks you open. Mm. to loving yourself and knowing you're not flawed because none of us are you're not flawed you're carrying deep emotional wounds and programs from your past mm. you're not flawed as a person you know we just have armored up over lifetimes and lifetimes we've armored our hearts up to protect ourselves. And often it was because we have a history of being killed for <laughs> walking this path back to ourselves, back to our source light, back to God and our connection. We were persecuted for that. It wasn't yeah. safe. So this is such a huge pivotal time on the planet because people are, you are safe to do this, to walk this path and shine your light. It is safe to come forward and you're here to do that right now. So many people are so uncomfortable because they're going through this rapid awakening and it's terrifying, right? Like, oh my gosh, I need to, this inner calling is, is pulling them so hard and it's like, oh my God, this is terrifying, <laughs> you know, to answer that call. Yeah. And to re back, reconnect back into love for yourself and reconnect to yourself at source and trust yourself. It's such a foreign thing for so many, but it really is the way forward. You know? What have you been finding, Steve, is changing within you as you go further on the journey? What, what has been... What have you noticed within yourself? I mean, you've had incredible soul growth just in this past year. You know, what are you noticing about yourself and how you're navigating life? So, hmm, a number of things more said it centeredness and kind of going back to what we were saying uh you know i used to think what does that mean to be centered to be grounded it was just a phrase a word right. but now i realize well it means to be coming from your center that we need to live through in this life which is your heart and again that's just like a concept oh what do you mean in my heart but now i realize when i'm centered and grounded i i'm just there I'm just present. And again, I'm not in a reactive mode, trying to do something, trying to be something. Yeah. I'm just enjoying this moment. Um, and it could be interacting with other people, like even with this conversation with you, I'm just like many times you're talking and I'm just here listening. Part of my mind goes off. Oh, I'm going to respond that way. I'm going to say <laughs> this after that. But then I shift back and I'm like, oh no, here, I'm just here. I'm just listening. And I don't, I'm, it's not like I'm telling myself that I'm just, I but just have to do it. The presence that. and the centeredness yeah. and, and balance you feel within yourself. Right. And then the other thing I noticed is this, this more real connection to what, kind of what I talked about, that inner smile, the inner beingness mm -hmm. and knowing, getting a more of a feeling sense of how that is an aspect of God. And that's why it doesn't need anything because God is complete and whole and infinite. So what the hell would I need? What, what can I further add to myself? And of course, these are concepts that I've known for 25, 30 years, 
but I feel like I'm starting to experience them more and more. To well, embody it is different than knowing. No, it's to- totally different, and I think that's an, uh, another aspect. Just just simply saying that I'm um, I'm embodying embodying more and more of these uh, deep spiritual truths that I've known so long in my life. Right. I'm embodying them more. I'm living them. Uh, uh, what I mentioned before, just seeing these small moments of beauty, mm-hmm. these incredible moments of beauty, um, being more the observer, but now the loving observer, the uh, embracing observer. It's almost like I'm embracing it all, but grasping at none of it. That's true freedom. Yeah, there, there's the freedom there, of That's course. How has it impacted your work? I know you sit with people who are, you know, in the last stages of their life and transitioning, you know, out of this human life. How is, how is the sense of presence and open-hearted being impacted your work and how you show up? Yeah, yeah. I I really, for some people, this may sound weird, but I really enjoy the work. Because wherever that person is in their process of transitioning, um, when I go into their room, and I may not be there long, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes, um, I really consciously try to be present and just say a prayer, you know, something like help me to be, really be here and present and to give what give to this person whatever they need energetically that I that I can something along those lines mm-hmm. and um, so just being there in, in the presence in such a important part of their lives you know there's so many there's only a few pivotal moments in our lives of course this is a uh, such an absolute pivotal moment so of course we're so vast right i'm not just this little body looking at this other person in their little body you know i'm a vast energy field that i i can't even comprehend now and sometimes i've actually connected can feel a little bit but other times i'm i'm not but i know i am that so i'm allowing that vast energy field just to be there not to impose or change anything but if if I can be of service for that person in these 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 moments, then please please God, allow me to be that. You're making me want to cry right now. I know I'm choking up too. Emotional. And it's so good that you asked me that because it's so easy to forget that. Like again, you get caught up. Oh, I gotta do, I gotta see three more patients, and I gotta do this. So can I come back into myself, into this moment? And I do find myself, my, my my thoughts will go somewhere else. I'm not in the present, but catching myself and saying, oh, come back here. Come back here now. Yeah. And, and these shifting are sacred into that moments. Presence. Like the transition yes. of life is such a sacred thing. And yeah. it's not treated that way in our society. It's not, I mean... Yes, family members come and they have that moment of last connection and they feel a lot, right? But I think in general, death isn't honored the way life and birth is. But it's an equally powerful part of our human experience. And I think it's so beautiful that you can be there in whatever capacity um, is required energetically for the support and love towards these souls who are making their final, you know, ascent out of this particular human experience, chosen experience for themselves. And I love that you have the conscious awareness of, of what's possible and that you go with an open heart and no agenda and that there's so much power in that just showing up with love and saying, you know, 
if I can help this soul in any way energetically, maybe so, you know, or not, mm. but whatever sanctioned, right? Takes right. And to have that is a gift, that knowing on your part and to receive that from your patients is also a gift. So mm. it's really a beautiful divine and holy encounter, I feel. It's not just a job. Yeah, no. You know. And it's interesting. Um, no job. If you choose to bring your heart and love into it, no job is just a job. Right. You know, moment is just a moment. Because uh, mostly we're using the moment to get somewhere else, to get to the next moment. Or run away from the moment we didn't like back then. Yes. So, yeah. But it, it does. But... Yes, it, it, it this has a certain um just the nature of the job I'm doing offers me the opportunity to extend that love um and assist at such a pivotal moment uh, for this being. Yes. I love that the the universe or yourself at source positions you in this role yeah. yeah yeah isn't it amazing I'm, I'm i'm sure you've realized this too for yourself like when you look back if how you were moved and guided through life even though you didn't think you were you thought you were doing it all or or <laughs> right. you were resisting it all like right. why were you doing this to me but how where you know where i live right now is incredible yeah i live in in, in you know all around nature uh you know, I have beautiful relationships with my wife, with um, grandchildren that came into our lives. And yeah, so amazing. Met incredible people and I'm friends with incredible people like yourself. Thank you. That's just, so it's just amazing to see just the dance and the flow that has happened to get us both here in this conversation. Yes, right I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for it. I find that if people could just be kind to themselves and stop judging themselves so harshly and stop feeling less than and know that they are divine and that they are whole and, and complete and they came in as souls, these beautiful souls, right at this time on the planet to hold frequency, to do their healing work, to do whatever they're being called to do, maybe just live a beautiful human life and be an example, you know? There's so many higher reasons that we're here. It's not just a random coincidence. I mean, this time in human history and in the Earth's history is so powerful that people who have chosen to be here, either as a witness or participant or both, um, everyone that chose was here for a reason, you know? And it's not something to get all in your head about, like, I've got to find my purpose. i got to find my life yeah. purpose. You know, people get really <laughs> caught up in that. Your purpose mm. really is to do your inner work and reconnect to yourself, to that inner smile Steve mm. is talking about, to your soul, to self-love so that you can then pour from the overflow into the people around you and we don't realize how much of an impact we have on the people that we encounter whether it's that clerk at the grocery store or the ticket agent at the airport or that person you know you meet randomly at a park or something I mean all these encounters are opportunities for us to really show kindness, love, compassion for another. Right. You know, and that mm. that impacts people. I love I love that you use that word overflow. And um it speaks to so much of our inadequacies and beliefs of lack and uh as opposed to abundance. So yeah, coming into that knowingness that you are naturally abundant and it's like, you know, it's like a Rumi or a Sufi poem where you allow the cup 
to be filled in a continuous it's empty you you empty yourself your ego of yourself and then just the the cup just runneth over constantly oh and you don't have to say oh i'm going to give a little portion of wine to this person here's a little water for this person it just it's it's just flowing because right you are that clear vessel for that yes, yes. and you don't have to ration anything yeah. you know Never like have- you know, when people are in a place of lack or like unworthiness, everything is about what can I get? I need to hold on yeah. to this. What can I get? I need the, to get, you know, you're going through a divorce and you need to get, you know, you need to mm. stick it to them. You need to get so much out. And that's not the energy of this at all. It's the opposite. What we're, what we're about is like, there's enough abundance for everyone. There's enough love for everyone. There's enough energy for everyone. And and you stop resisting and fighting and you just organically release that icy grip on all of that. And your life opens up because energetically you're not constricting and holding your frequency down. You know, you're just, it's like taking off a belt that's two sizes too small. You just expand into the fullness of your being. And from that space, everything flows and as everything flows and as you experience it on a daily basis your faith in it also grows you're yeah. not in doubt and fear all the time you're like no i'm i can't see how this is going to work out but it's going to work out in my favor and it will you know it will but you have to get to that place where you are like you said filling your tank and loving yourself first and then you start expanding out and organically allowing those waters to flow from you and bless people around you in a very loving and unconditional way just because that's who you are not because there's an agenda you know so do you have any final words of wisdom Steve, as we close this beautiful conversation, I've loved everything you've talked about today. It's so beautiful. But do you have anything you'd like to share that's helped you maybe navigate these spaces of darkness or fear? You know, something that maybe helped you pull through. Well, I'd like to speak from my heart from presence. So let's just give me a pause um, and a a deep breath and see what comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Take a moment. So anything I say, you know, if the ego is taking it in, it it just seems like a platitude. Oh, live from your heart. Be present. So it's hard to say something that can point someone directly into that space but i guess what comes to me now is just what i've been experiencing check in your in with yourself look for that inner smile Mm -hmm. and if you can connect with that i'm finding for myself it's almost like a flame that i need to fan i need to keep it going it's it's always going to be there but I have to pay attention to it. And that inner smile can bring you to the place of what you just said with that beautiful, the way you put it, that overflow, that state of overflow. Um, Because we are abundance. You know, we are the universe. We're connected to God, the infinite, the eternal. Yes. So find, if you can, that inner smile and connecting with that a lot a lot of things can happen. A lot of release can happen. Yeah, definitely. Keep the flame alive. Yeah. Right? Steve, thank you so much. I've loved every moment with you today. Thank you. for. I, I have as well, Wendy. Thank you for inviting me. And to my audience, thank you so much for being here with us today. I hope you go out, love yourselves. Don't forget to love yourselves, nurture yourselves. And have a beautiful day. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.